Hi everybody, welcome to Brick Vault and welcome to another Top 10 Mox episode where we show all the favorite Mox that we have seen over the course of last week. This episode is a bit different because I'm recording this after Jack did his own one. After we moved to a new studio so we had a pretty tight schedule but I tried to choose a different Mox than Jack's and I think those will be pretty cool. At the end of the episode some of your fan mocks will be shown uh, because we just had a few days between those episodes so I'm not sure how many fan mocks will be there so I'm gonna try to do my best. And don't forget to visit our web store at www.brickvault.toys where we constantly add awesome mocks of different types and sizes. And of course as always all the links to the creations of every single top 10 mock will be in the description below so don't forget to visit all the creators Flickr pages and give them a follow. And let's get on with this week's top 10 list. The first one here here is coming from Stefan. This seems like a simple tractor, but it has much more to it. The full name of the model is Fend 500 Vario. And I have to say that for a, such a small build, it has a lot of awesome details. I'm surprised how much you can put into such a small model. It comes with different accessories like a forest mulcher or a forest blade, things like that. So it can pretty much fit the tractor with different equipment for different tasks. I always appreciate models that can show a lot of functionality in a very small form. And I think there is a great example of what you can achieve in just six studs of width. And moving up to number nine, this is for all of you who are waiting for the UCS set of the same name. This is the Cloud City by Didier Burton. And yes, that is a city in the clouds, but in a microscale build with some very meticulous use of, uh, I think, accessory pieces. First, I love the build for the stand with transparent 1x2s and whatnot for the clouds. That looks actually pretty awesome. We've got a very small base for uh, the city's landscape in brown and then a lot of gribbling or city buildings, if you may, used uh, or made by black pieces that are usually minifigure accessories. So you can see the bullhorn pieces. I think there is some... Uh, metal detector pieces, some poles, whatnot, and I'm surprised how much of an awesome look can those pieces show in such form. That is one of those mocks which you just see and really immediately appreciate the use of pieces. And you can agree that you don't really need many pieces or a crazy design to make a very appealing creation. And probably that factor is what I like about custom LEGO building the most. With number 8 we are getting into the classic space and that is a great take on it. I really love this mock so much. This is uh, Wami Dalthorn and this mock has like two titles. Either Baby Exosuit or Exosuit Not Suitable for Children. I like this collage the most. It shows a very decent build for many things. First a classic space room with a classic space dad and even a classic space nanny in form of an android. Giving the baby what seems to be the LEGO Ideas Exosuit set. You gotta appreciate all the furniture in baby's room, especially the bed with I think a code lock you know, to the side of it. There is I think a changing table or a feeding table, a lot of cool stuff on the shelves as well, some classic space sets perhaps. And the last shot is baby appreciating the build, just testing it out in his very friendly room environment. The exosuit build for the baby is really awesome, you gotta appreciate all the gribbling and the connections made here and the scale is pretty well done too. Holding a teddy bear you can see, so I guess that helps the babies before they start walking. I really encourage you to check out Wami Delthorn's Flickr page. He's built a lot of classic space stuff, but for example, he built the massive magnetizer from Mtron, one of my favorite sets of the 90s, and his version is even better. And let's keep it in classic somewhat space for number seven. This is Jeremy Williams coming with a ship named Shock. An, which stands for Crescent Moon in Xillian language. According to the designer's description, this is a ship used by the Xillian Defense Fleet for intercepted duties against raiders and smuggling operations." End of quote. I appreciate the shape of it, the cockpit looks really awesome in this somewhat of a gyro setting, very round cockpit to be honest. I like those clamps holding the entire sphere, seems like the pilot has a pretty impressive field of view. And the whole thing seems to be rotating against the entire body of the ship with one connection point and some awesome lasers on both ends. The color combo of orange and dark bluish grey works pretty well here, along with those custom stickers that were made for the ship. And also the build for the engine nozzle looks pretty impressive. Jeremy has a pretty proven track record of building everything space, from ships to vehicles. I think my favorite one of his is the RS-7 rover that he built some time ago. Very realistic too, looks like something that actually NASA would make in the future and it was inspired by the rover as shown in the Martian film with Matt Damon. Oh, and it's uh, RC remotely controlled, so that's even more amazing. Moving up to number 6, we have our mech of the week, and guess who it is? That comes from LEGO 7, the builder that we love to feature every time we can. 
and this is the Centaur Knight mech. What's unique about this, first it has four legs, it corresponds with somewhat of a medieval theme, and I see some Halo vibes in here, especially with that awesome looking helmet. The thing is holding a lance and what seems to be a shield, and it's very poseable as many LEGO 7's builds are. Of course, excellent photography, nothing less to say here as expected from LEGO 7, and I love some of the poses that he chose for showing off this guy. Every time we mention LEGO 7's builds, I always encourage people to check out his page if you haven't already, because that's probably one of the most impressive feed of uh, LEGO builds that you can find on Flickr nowadays. With number 5, however, we are moving into something more classic, something more traditional, that is Aaron Newman and, uh, let me try to pronounce it, Le Chateau de Chenonso. Probably I made a lot of mistakes in that French name of the building, but nevertheless I am quite impressed of the outcome. I think the common name for this building is Castle on a River, that's why the photography is showing the castle with a beautiful reflection on the water, I'm glad he took those shots, it looks very impressive. And you see a lot of archways, beautiful facade for the side of the building, and the one of the sides is actually castle with a lot of pointy towers. I've been to France in a few times and definitely their architecture from the ages is very impressive, so that catches this vibe very very well. And even though it seems like using very simple techniques or bricks that are quite common, but I believe this was nothing short of easy to put together, and I'm sure if you compare it to the real thing, to the real landscape, to the real landmark, it's gonna be very very close. Very fine entry, and I'm glad that I was able to put something more traditional in this week's top 10 list. And moving up to number 4, this one comes from Claw, and it's called the Turbulent Sea. I appreciate the two things about the smoke the most. First, the looks, those are excellent, but second, the water. If you imagine how much time and patience it took to put together those one by one studs to create this waterbed, you would be even more amazed by this thing. I mean, it must have taken hours just to create that water, but let's talk about the ship a bit. You can see first Jack Sparrow escaping the thing in the front, it looks pretty awesome on those waves. And the ship itself is very amazing for the scale, it's not too big, not too small, has a lot of action going into it. Very cool mast work with those sails, there is the bridge area with a lot of action going on as well, and the color combination of the brown hull with some red painting to it, plus the brown elements on the ship itself, with a bunch of griblings and all the ship equipment, it does look impressive to say the least. But still I think the water is winning in this one, and I think that itself makes this display really unique, really pop out among the other ones with the ships, and shows a lot of dedication towards Mog's building. Probably one of the best waves builds I've seen in a while. And moving into the top 3, I'm giving some heads up here, we are having 3 really big builds. The first one is coming from Andre Pinto, and that is a locomotive, the model being CP1408. I am not any train expert, but here is the picture of the real thing. And now you can compare it to the build, you gotta say it's pretty impressive and very close uh, resemblance of the real uh, thing. Now this build is impressive just in the sheer size of it, it's using over 14,000 bricks. According to the designer it takes 7,000 bricks for the stand, the rail track, I think most of them are just those one by one tiles to create the gravel, and the remaining 7,000 go into the locomotive itself. Beautiful detailing in such scale, you definitely would not want to skip on details if you building that big, and uh, even the wheels alone, according to Andre, are taking 19 pieces each. You have to be really into engineering of such vehicles, I'm sure that's Andre's passion to create those, and it really pays off in this amazing model, that is something I would love to see even like in a Legoland display. And I believe you are missing a Star Wars build in this top 10 mocks, well, don't be afraid, there is a Star Wars mock right in number 2, and this is one that I was so happy to see, this is the Nebulon B Frigate, the Redemption, as you may call it, my favorite ship of all the Rebel fleet that has never made into a Lego set. The Nebulon B Medical Frigate is one of the most iconic in terms of looks ships of the Rebel fleet, and one case here designed a really impressive one. I have seen some iterations of this ship uh, throughout the years, but this one seems to be one of the best looking for the scale it's built into. A lot of studless techniques here, so that's very uh, appealing in the first place. And also the gribbling that goes along the spine of the Corvette looks very nice, with, especially with the Falcon docked into it. 
It's a very hard ship to build and balance I believe, so the stand looks like it's actually standing very solidly. Some very nice photography goes into that and one case is actually one of my favorite Star Wars builders of the latest times. He built things like the awesome Star Destroyer above Jeddah, that's one of the most amazing builds I've seen for this model, and the insane Executor Dreadnought that I have featured in one of the last Top 10 Mox episodes. So the Nebulon B Medical Frigate is one of his latest finished constructions for his collection and he is also working on a massive Star Destroyer, he posted a picture of a Lego build bridge, I think made of a 4000 pieces, blended into a 3D render of a beautiful Star Destroyer uh, picture. If he goes for a full Lego build at this scale, I think I have something to really wait for. And uh, get ready for number one, because you will be amazed, this is a build covered in a very nice article by the Brothers Brick, and that is Brent Waller, the guy that built the Ecto-1, an idea set that was on the shelf some time ago, and now he has finished something even more, vastly more amazing. This is the Lego Batman Wayne Manor, with a huge Batcave underneath, and Brent uh, was actually working on the Lego the Batman movie, his models of the Batmobiles, some of the Batmobiles were featured in the film, he designed them for the film, and now he is showing off basically with his amazing build for the manor with a massive Batcave underneath. The manor itself is a piece of art, a master build if I may, but the Batcave has, I mean, I just see the video, I'm gonna link a video below showing all the details, the nifty things like villains placed in there, with scenes coming from even the 1960s original TV Batman show up to the Dark Knight trilogy by Christopher Nolan. The build has a ton of easter eggs uh, to show everything you love about the Batman saga. The guesstimation of the amount of pieces by brand hovers around 100,000 pieces or even more, I have no idea. And of course the whole thing is fitted with uh, custom lights and moving functions like a moving Batcave with Batmobiles, a moving belt with Batman suits. I can talk about this for hours and hours, you just go see the video and you will be simply astonished by it, how much he worked and how much details he put into this thing. And with that massive accent, I'm gonna be ending this episode today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Those are the top 10 mocks that I have chosen for this week. Now let's take a moment to take a look at your mocks that you guys are sending to our fan mocks email. I keep sending them. All the rules and the email are right in the description below. We always appreciate seeing all the cool stuff you guys build. And of course, thanks so much for watching. As always, you can leave a like right below, subscribe if you haven't already, and also click that bell notification button to get uh, notified every time we upload a new video. Anyway, here are your fanmox creations. It was Mike and I'll see you next time on Brick Vault.